Lost guitar, lost guitar. I wonder where you are. Closing down every star. Hit the triplets in your sleep. Nothing left to string. Took the day job over Mars. Lost guitar. The drying demons in between. The reasons we believed. Every note played was free. Tuned a half step down. Fretting without sound. Darkness fills your eyes, lost guitar. In my dream under the bed, locked in a case, left for dead. Though my time is full, my soul still wanders. My hands keep reaching for lost guitar. Inside your hat, shut the lights out too quick. Nothing left to fix. Cut the heart to the vein of a thundering refrain. Lost guitar. Swimming garbage, burning sand. Once a trusty dam. Bursting at the seams. Memories fill your dreams. Slept outside the bar. Nothing left but scars. Lost guitar. Under the bed, locked in a case, left for dead. Though my time is full, my soul still wanders. My hands keep reaching for lost guitar. Live at Gilmore Guitars, podcast number 50. Gordy Tentries, Jackson Helding. Welcome to the shop, guys. Oh, thanks for having us. Killer show last night at the Jeans Joint. Thank you. I don't think anyone died, but I, I'm uh, glad that uh, people were there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a great show. And uh, uh, we had this conversation last night with, uh, with one of the guys that was there, how different the shows get each time you, you come around. And, uh, and you had mentioned that you try to to do that sort of thing, to not be the same every time somebody sees you? Every time, I think that's important. You can't, I remember it, I was thinking before I played the show, what I did the last time I was here a year and a half ago, and, and uh, pretty much did the exact opposite, which was really great, um, which is great to be able to do. And I think it's important to do that, especially if you want to uh, get an audience to come back and expect that they're going to see something they didn't see the last time, you know? Right. So I, that's what I look for when I go see, uh, follow, you know, want to go to a show myself if I see the same show a year later it's a bit disappointing so I think that's always been a personal thick quest of mine for a, a long time so it's uh and now that yeah you know there's more songs to play and more things to talk about and do and more moments that are created between the last time you're from one place to um the next um it's really fun it's really fun to just kind of uh have an idea of what you want to do and then uh make up a, a whole bunch of stuff and that you're doing something a little bit different on this tour as well is on some of the shows you have somebody coming recording everything live uh, for a new record that you're going to put out. Yeah, we just did three nights. Um, and we're going to do five nights this week. We are doing uh, Calgary this Thursday night at the Ironwood and Friday in Athabasca at the Hartwood uh, Folk Club. Um, and recording those with a friend of ours from uh, Edmonton, uh, Scott Franchuk who's done uh, some really neat stuff, um, producing records and engineering records. So we have him, and we're just trying to capture a bunch of stuff from Five Nights and put it together in a record. It's um, a bunch of new songs, a bunch of songs that are older, that have kind of been dusted off. And uh, generally the whole thing, the idea is to create something that 
sort of encompasses what Jackson and I have been doing for the last two years live, which is different than um, any of the records I've put out. So it's kind of exciting to see what happens. And it's a whole new experience learning how to, um, you know, play for an audience uh, with new material and also um, being recorded at the same time. It's a bit nerve wracking, but I feel like uh, we're uh, getting the hang of it. So it, it, it has to be nerve wracking because there's really nothing to hide behind when you're doing that live show and recording, you know, you're, it's, it's there for posterity, right? Yeah, and, and it's funny, in, in your head you have this idea how certain thongs, songs have been sounding and how they sound so good until you hear them the next day and you're like, oh man, that doesn't sound as good as we think it does. <laughs> <laughs> and then you pull out other tunes that you just nail in uh, one time through and you don't need to do them again and you can't believe it happens. So it's about capturing some mojo and some magic, some magical mojo. That's kind of our show is kind of uh, we know where home is with all of their songs and, and we know um, it's really fun to go off the tracks uh, a lot. And we do that a lot. And it's really fun. Sometimes uh, um, I do that because um, I just do that. <laughs> Not, not meaning to it's a pretty organic thing but it's a uh, part of i think what's been charming about what we're doing and and to try to get that on a record is uh, it's been a really fun experience so the format of the record is it going to sound like a start to finish show or are you just going to pick and choose performances mix them and put we're it going to pick and choose songs um you may still present it in a way where it sounds like it's just one show but it probably won't be all cuts from one show. One specific right. show. Yeah. Right. From all of them. And it's uh, it's going to be interesting to see what turns out because we're pretty picky, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, it's pretty funny to uh, our, our engineer is uh, he's happy with everything. And we're like, nope, that one's not going to go throw that one out. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, whoa. Uh, so it's interesting to hear have an outsider, I think we're the harshest critics and every little clam or flub that we make, we're just like, nope, not good enough, out, boom. Right. So it's, uh, it's hard to do that because there's so much spirit too in the moment, right? You can hear the spirit in the song and there's that that we're going for too, which is a big part of what we do live. Um, there's a lot of spirit into the music and the show and the song. So we're trying to capture that. It's really interesting. I've never... Uh, and it's got to be a challenge from an engineering production standpoint recording live shows in different rooms because every room is going to sound completely different. Yeah, we haven't totally uh, run up against that yet because we're still in the capture stage of the process. Right. But I, I imagine that that'll be a challenge for Scott is trying to make disparate uh, performances in different locations sound like, you know, it all happened at one time. But maybe that just isn't going to be something we concern ourselves with in the right. end. It's just going to depend on what everything sounds like and how much we love the performances. And I don't care if one performance is, sounds like it's in a completely different room than another, if they're right. both great performances. So right. Yeah, and if it ends up being a little right. scruffy, you know, there's some things that we listened back to already that are pretty funny and, and uh, you know, obvious mistakes, but it's the great mistakes. And we could never try to do that if we tried. So it's kind of what the whole point of it is, and it's kind of what we are, and, and uh, gives people our fans a chance to be able to see us in concert, um, and then be able to take something home that was really representative of what we, what they just saw. You know. Nice. All right. Speaking of live performance, let's get another song in here at right. uh, at the Gilmore Guitar Shop. You have a banjo. I do have a banjo. Okay. Yes. Hang on one second. Let me stand by for a banjo. Stand by for so banjo. what are you going to do now? This song, this song is, is this is a new song that's never been recorded. We're uh, it'll probably be on the the new record. It's called Craft Beards and Man Buns, and this is a co-write I um, I did with my friend Mr. Fred J. Eaglesmith, who's an interesting cat in his own right. He's a whole <laughs> series of podcasts all <laughs> by themselves. Live at Gilmore Guitars, Gordy Tentrees, Jackson Haldane. Craft beards, man buns, just leave it alone, my son. You regret that when you look back, like a tattoo on a roll of fat. Those mullets sure did make them look faster. In '91, they wore their pants around their ass, sir. Craft beards. When the day is done, when the day is done You're the king of 
the internet Someday you'll be president There's so much ahead of you When you leave home at 42 Craft beards, man buns Just leave it alone, my son You regret that when you look back Like a tattoo on a roll of fat Those mullets sure did make them look faster In 91 they wore their pants around their ass Sir Craft beards Man buns You'll regret it When the day is done When the day is done When the day is done Sure did make them look faster In 91 they wore their pants around their ass Sir Craft beards Man buns You regret it When the day is done When the day is done When the day is done. Live at Gilmore Guitars, podcast number 50, Gordy Tantries and Jackson Haldane. Tell, talk a little bit about the, the story of writing this song, because yeah, you had, you had told the story last night in the show. It's a, it's a pretty great story. Well, you got to uh, come to the shows this week to hear about the story. <laughs> I can't be giving away. This is top secret stuff. We're playing tomorrow night in Jasper, Wednesday in Golden, Thursday in Calgary. Uh, Friday in Athabasca, Saturday in Peace River, and we're serious about all five of these shows. This may be the last time we play in Western Canada for like two years. Um, it's really exciting. If you want to hear the story behind that song, you got to get a ticket to the show. Can't give it away. <laughs> all right. Yep. Fair enough. <laughs> Can't give it away. Yep. Look right into the camera when you say that. <laughs> Shaw Cable is, is here recording this, by the way. So one of the reasons that people may not see you for two years is because you just signed a record deal with a, a German label. Yes. And, um, which is great. It's great to have some help. Um, record deals that, you know, um, they come with all kinds of good things and, and some things that are stressful, but, uh, I think this is a good situation for us. And this was, this came about, um, someone seeing us and, and hearing about us, uh, for a while now. And then, um, realizing what they could do and it's kind of at a great point where i've been doing all the things i that i've been doing overseas in europe on my own for quite some time i had a label in holland i still do a dutch label that's uh quite nice to me but a lot of uh, a lot of the booking and and uh stuff has uh been on my own plate so it's really nice to have more of a team over there and uh, we haven't really exposed ourselves through the media or the radio um in the market that they work with, which is Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, um, as well as Italy. So it'll be neat to finally have someone to push us um, into the listeners in all those areas to go along with the shows that we're already playing. So I'm kind of excited about it. I'm kind of to see uh, what happens with that. And uh, it really just means in a, in a nutshell that we're going to be going there a lot more than we have to and, and uh it's going to be fun. It's going to be really fun. So are they acting more as an agent? They're doing or? everything. It's all under one roof. So they're booking the, booking the tours. They're promoting them, uh, handling the publicity, uh, as well as all the label services associated with a record label, including manufacturing uh, records over there and doing it all over there. So are they going to take some of your back catalog and they're going to release, remix and um, release? Or? Our latest record, Less Is More, right. in September, sorry, October 2017. And then in February, 
2018, they're going to release Road Paint, which is this live record that we're doing. And then we're following it up with a, a, um, a tour in April of 2018. And then uh, continuing on from there. So it's kind of, a, it's just great to have some help. And um, we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. So less is more. You're sort of winding down the cycle of that record now then. I, yeah, for sure. Okay. The kind of, the kind of go in two year cycles. Um or three years depends on you know there's no real rules there's no rules anymore everything's been broken the business is upside down it's a mess it's a complete mess so um it doesn't you can do whatever you want whatever seems to work for you as an artist and for me as an artist what's been working is just doing what exactly what where where you know going where people want me to go um which has been great but uh they're going to put it out, re release it in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland in that market. Less is more. It hasn't been released in there properly or with any uh, power behind it. So it's going to be, or any help behind it. So other than me doing it on my own and just, you know, playing for audiences live, now I'll have some help on the other side, the business end of things. So we need to see what comes of that. Nice. Yeah. So um, you guys, now Jackson Haldane, you're a... You're a Winnipeg guy, and and Gordy, you're a Yukon guy. Uh, how how did this whole thing start with you? Because you you've you've done some pretty extensive touring together now, and Jackson, you've got you've got a, a rock and roll history all your own with a you know with the the Winnipeg band, the Derangers, and you know. So how, how does this all work for you guys? It uh, it all started in Oklahoma somehow. I went, uh, after the D-Rangers decided to take a hiatus, long needed hiatus where everyone could sort of reevaluate what needed to happen in their individual lives. I decided mine was leading to Oklahoma where I went back to school for a while, sort of dipped my toe in a whole other, you know, side of the, of the, of, of life. And, uh, towards the end of my academic, uh, adventure down there, Gordy gave me a call one day and said, uh, we're doing a songwriter tour of Texas and one of our songwriters bailed and do you want to fill in? And I'm like, and I thought oh, I'm getting to the point where I could actually pull this off in school. I, everything's really winding down and I've got the time and I was like, yeah, I'd love to do that. So we went out and did that tour and realized the chemistry was great and the, the music, the music just, it was just an, a good thing that we both wanted to do more of. And from there, Gordy just started saying, look, I, you know, I'm always booking tours. Why don't you just come on some of my, you know, in, in particular, you know, large uh, European tour right. adventures. And I was like, oh, man, I'd love to do that. And uh, it just hasn't really, we haven't stopped doing it yet. So, so it, had you toured as extensively with, with your thing as you have with Gordy? Because literally Gordy and you have been around the world. Yeah, I didn't travel to as many places. I traveled, I, I did as uh, sort of as grueling a schedule as as we do um, with the D-Rangers, but never covering the breadth of different markets that, right. we, that I do with Gordy and seeing all these new places. is all, It's all brand new. Like going to the D-Rangers made it once to Europe, you know, and right. uh, and it was really just, just Northern Ireland. So for one festival, and I've seen so much now of, of that part of the world, uh, all through Gordy's efforts and uh, connections and stuff like that. So it's, it's it's been an amazing experience for me. But uh, that's kind of the genesis story. Yeah, it. it's been a, it's been really organic. Other than I've I've it always has been really, and, and I just uh, I'm a bit of a planner, so I know where I'm going to be in 2020. You know, it's just like uh, I knew that. Uh, once I play with them, I thought, man, this is really fun. And you get to a certain age where you want, you know, it's more important about the time you spend off stage together than you do on together. So it's really nice to have a great travel companion and a buddy that's like, he's been through this before. He knows how, he knows what I'm doing. He sees what's going on. And um, it also gives him a chance to do what he does, which is he's a songwriter. Um, Jackson is a great songwriter. And uh, for in the last two years, it's been really neat to watch him get on a stage with a handful of songs and with a background of, you know, having a five piece band to just alone with a guitar and seeing him just overnight, just kill it. And, uh, it's really cool to watch the whole transformation to watch. And now he's the, he's a legitimate real deal, you know, which wasn't, uh, wasn't what was happening when he first started opening the show. So it's really cool to watch that happen. And I think that the whole show itself, having him do that, open the show, 
and then get up and play five instruments with me is a real treat for anyone that takes us uh, takes it in for the for the night and for us. To, I, I like I like watching the whole thing. You're like you have this solo guy get up there who can really sing, got some beautiful songs, can play great guitar, and then sit down with me and do something totally different. Um, it makes for a really nice show. So that's been really what's been happening. It's been sort of steamrolling that way from one thing to another, and and it's been a bit of a, a quite a big transformation, sort of a rebirth for me to getting down to not being just a solo artist, but having a accompanist and, and no, no need for a band anymore. There's no real need for, I don't right. need a, for yeah. what I do. You got a porch a, board, you got a harmonica. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot a... of stuff going on. It's a full sounding. Yeah. And a rip saw. Yeah. It's, a, it's, we got nine <laughs> instruments and two guys and we don't just play one. I think the key is not playing one genre of music. You can expect a blues tune, a country tune or a folky storytelling kind of tune. Um, or just some, something whacked out and weird combining all those things. So it's uh, it's really great to play, be able to play in different countries because of that, because it's not just one thing, um, and it sort of appeals, it crosses over into many different markets and, and genres, which is great for us. All right, let's get another song in. Okay, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna get Jackson uh, to play a tune, and I'm gonna play some harp. I'm gonna pass him one of these fine Gilmore guitars. I might play this one. You gonna play that one? Okay. I think I might play this one. Maybe I'm not going to pass him that then. <laughs> <laughs> so for the purposes of the, the podcast, you guys are playing some Gilmore guitars. Yes, we are, aren't we? Yes, you are. Oh, yes. <clears throat> Take it away, Jackson. Live at Gilmore like, Guitars. Mean, like walk out the door with it? Uh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to take it away. It's podcast number 50, <laughs> live at Gilmore Guitars. Just me and a pretty little gal with dark hair Sitting on the porch with Charlie Parker Watching while the sun grew dimmer and dimmer And the nighttime fell Never was a reality stalker Sitting on the porch with Charlie Parker Watching while the sun grew dimmer and dimmer And the nighttime fell Well, all along the way she dreamed of leaving Forever, never mind Or even Stephen Cause me and another little gal with dark hair Sitting on the porch with Charlie Parker Watching while the sun grew dimmer and dimmer And the nighttime filled Well, she smokes and drinks and shoots and gambles Driving down the road with Charlie Daniels Watching while the sun grew dimmer and dimmer And the nighttime fell Turns out she's running from the angels Driving down the road with Charlie Daniels Watching while the sun grew dimmer and dimmer And the nighttime fell She's breaking out in sweats and heavy breathing Forever, never mind, or even Steven Cause me and just about all the others <laughs> Like Charlie Feathers Watching while the sun grew dimmer and dimmer And the nighttime fell just watch him while the sun grew dimmer and dimmer and the nighttime filled. Well, I'm with Gilmore Guitars, Jackson Halday, along with uh, Gordy Tentries on the harmonica. So let's just uh, kind of wrap up where we're going with, with the tour, where you're going, when and where and what, and uh, talk a little bit about your your social media and your web presence so people can actually reach out and buy <sighs> your records. You can go to my buy web your tickets. Yeah, no, I think people should buy my records. I'm totally up for that. <laughs> um, you can go to and feed my children. It's becoming Christmas is coming soon. Um, tentrees.ca, not nine trees.com, but tentrees.ca. <laughs> That's where you can find um, my music and feed my children. They're, they would like. Um, some new video games and um, <laughs> um, some warmer clothing for the holiday season. 
um, and everything else there. We're here in Western Canada, like I said, uh, for the rest of this week, tomorrow night in, in Jasper, Wednesday, Golden Thursday in Calgary at the Ironwood, and Friday Athabasca, Saturday in Peace River, and uh, come on out and have some fun with us. Hey, can I send a shout out to, Absolutely. to Purdy Amps? Yes. This is a mighty Purdy amp <laughs> right here, and uh, it was a pleasure to, to play through it. Uh, whoever's building these things is doing a great job. Pete Purdy out of uh, St. Albert, Saskatchewan. Awesome. Or St. Albert, Alberta, okay. not Saskatchewan. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. It's a prince. The yes. Saskatchewan one's a prince. Yes. Uh, we got time, I think, for one more song here, guys. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's do let's, let's get okay. her done. Right. Live at Gilmore Guitars, podcast number fifty. Gordy Tentries and Jackson Helding. Couldn't believe Caught it online Over the wire Someone's daughter Pretty dire Held my breath Thought of an old friend Who once woke The wishing for dead You may not walk You might not run The truth is loose For anyone Like any reason To just give in there's plenty more for living. Yukon heart, weed covered chest, fireweed on her breast. There ain't nothing left for her to lose by rolling down the track. There ain't nothing left for her to lose by rolling down. Riding waves of emotion in today's of devotion, turning corners without regret. Elbows up on the home stretch, without a doubt, with a smile, stands a man proud of his child, back by the sound of a loving town, that never gives in or lets you down. Now she's leaning on the line with her mom on her chest fire on her breast there ain't nothing left for her to lose by rolling down the track there ain't nothing left for her to lose by rolling down the track chest fireweed on her breast there ain't nothing left for her to lose by rolling down the track there ain't nothing left for her to lose by rolling down the track